Hey guys, Rob Avis here. I'm out in Kamloops, BC and on a property here, actually David's property. What's the region again? Thompson Nicola Valley, is that right? Thompson Nicola Regional District. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And so uh, we've been out uh, kind of looking at Dave's property and Dave's got really big ambitions to basically start a regenerative agriculture project on this property. We've been just walking the land and tell us a little bit about some of your ambitions, Dave. Uh, the goal, how it all started actually, uh, at, uh, as it is uh, cascaded into something much greater than I had uh, originally expected, but it was really all about uh, the self-sufficiency on the property. So we were looking to uh, take a, a home that was quite isolated and rural and make it into an off-grid uh, sustainable environment. And uh, in my, uh, my, my naivete and ignorance, I thought that a greenhouse would be all I needed and uh, I found Rob. Uh, online has having having uh, designed a, a brilliant one and uh, in talking with him and uh, realizing that there was more to uh, to learn and to think about in regards to creating the kind of system I uh, was aiming for uh, we brought Rob and uh, his partner Dakota on over and uh, it's been quite an eye-opening and uh, evolving experience and we're starting to look at uh, holistic systems and uh, finding different ways to integrate the permaculture uh, facets into uh, a system that's going to work for the family and, uh, and provide the, the off-grid sustainable living that we're, uh, we're aiming for. So what's really unique about this project, number one, is that we're starting with a pretty degraded piece of land and so as a result of doing some diagnostic work, walking around the property, looking at the region, uh, we're in a pretty classic kind of interior desert and so Kamloops is super arid, um, it gets about 270 to 300 milliliters of, uh, millimeters of rain per year um, and a much, has a much higher evaporation rate and so that makes it a bit of a fragile environment. Um, it has generally been, uh, most of this region anyways, has been overgrazed probably for the last 100 years and given that it is sensitive and arid um, has meant that the, the pressure has not sent the, the landscape in the right direction. It's created water issues. Um, and so, as we say in permaculture, constraints are always an incredible opportunity to um, find solutions. And so that's kind of what we've been uh, looking at as we've been walking the property. And so behind us is kind of a typical landscape uh, that you'd find here. So we've got a lot of bunch grasses, there's lots of open soil um, or exposed soil to the sun. Um, there's a little bit of diversity, but not a lot. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of typical situation that you'd find yourself uh, when land is being overgrazed. And so as a result of walking all around the property, we found incredible water harvesting opportunities. Um, we've also found some historic water harvesting features that have been abandoned. So if you remember in a previous video that Dakota and I did in the Tucson, or near Tucson, uh, at some of the Avro Valley swales, hyper arid, uh, pretty degraded landscape back uh, during the, the the New Deal, that was, who did the New Deal? Was it, was it president? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Roosevelt did. He employed all these people to basically build giant swales in the middle of the desert. And you can still see them to this day on Google Earth Pro. And so last year, Dakota and I had the opportunity to go check them out and build some films. We've got almost an analog of that going on here, although it's way less uh, fragile than near Tucson. We've got a lot more moisture and a lot less evaporation than that desert. We found a former remnant of a pond wall down there, and as a result of it, uh, have similar effects happening to the soil and to the biota, which we're gonna go take a peek at. And so when we're on properties like this with our clients, and we're, we're looking and looking for patterns um, that we can replicate and garner information from, when we find something like this, it's, it's a literal gold mine because it gives us clues as to what would happen to the ecosystem if we started using similar patterns or opportunities elsewhere on the property. And literally you can look at this landscape over here and then when we take you down just to the left of me over here, you're gonna see a completely different ecology uh, within just a few meters of, of them. So, so let's head down there and uh, we'll look at some of these remnants that we found and, uh, and see what we uncover. All right, so I'm standing on this mound that was probably built a long time ago, and we just totally by happenstance walked upon this yesterday. We were walking through the landscape, and there's not a lot of trees on this landscape, um, but there's this little grove. There's one behind me, and there's one just over there to my right. And sure enough, we got here, and there's this mound, which clearly has been placed here uh, by some human in the past. And as a result of this, 
has changed how the soils are forming. Um, and so this would be a, an analog to a swale or an analog to a dam. And so the type of effects that we could expect to see on a property like this as a result of um, some earthworks um, could be expressed uh, with regards to what we're kind of observing here. So this is a great uh, example for us to, to, to garner or a pattern that we would refer to in permaculture. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what the soils look like outside of the grove, and we're gonna look at what the soils look like inside the grove, and then we'll round it out with a bit of a, a dialogue, um, kind of comparing the two um, with regards to what we find. So let's go take a peek. So we're just taking a look at um, some of the soil that's below the uh, little water harvesting feature inside this grove of trees that has popped up. And uh, what we're noticing is, you know, it's there's very good soil texture. This is some of the, uh, the chocolatey cake structure of the soil. It's just really nice color, lots of little roots in there. And so with, with this change in soil, as we'll see, compared to uh, the, the pasture that's, that's outside of the influence of this, this water harvesting structure, um, you'll see that there's a, there's a corresponding change in the, the, um, the color of vegetation as well as the, the species of vegetation. You know, we're starting to get um, uh, species like cedar and, and juniper and um, more, um, more broadleaf grasses like fescues and, and uh, you know, crested wheatgrass, and there's even some crack grass that's, uh, that's growing in here. Whereas on the outside of this, you know, there's really only one species of grass that, that's just a, a really tough kind of uh, um, uh, very, very drought tolerant fescue. Um, and that is, is certainly a result of the, um, the, the soil, uh, the, the shade from the trees above us, and, and, and all of this stuff clearly started as a result of there just being enough water being infiltrated into the soil so that the, this plant community could, could get established. And, you know, curiously enough, if we look, you know, right beside us here, there's uh, a really nice, uh, you know, pile of, um, of manure from, from, you know, the cows that have obviously started to take refuge in, uh, in this little ecosystem here. I'm sure on a, you know, really hot, dry day, this place would be just uh, a haven, uh, or if it was, you know, windy and cold and snowy, you've, you've got protection from, from the elements um, in this little ecosystem popping up. And so the animals are, are starting to congregate more in here than they would out in the pastures. And so you're getting, a, a, you know, a deposition of, of, of nutrients, which is going to further improve the soil health and the, the uh, successional cycle uh, as, we, as we go forward through time. So let's go and take a look at what the soil looks like uh, outside of this grove, just a few meters outside, and you'll see the, the stark contrast. All right, so now we're just outside the, uh, the little forested glen there, taking a look at what the soil looks like outside. And uh, what we'll see is, you know, there's a, this is a, a sample from the, the forest that we um, that we just came from. Here's here's a sample of the uh, the soil from the forest that we brought out with us. Um, and you can see the the contrast in in what the subsoils uh, uh, look like. The uh, you know a little closer to the surface, we've uh, the the change isn't quite as as contrasting. But this is more of like a kind of a, a gray wooded soil um, versus this this you know really nice chocolatey brown loam of a soil that has a, a ton of organic matter. You can see all of the, uh, uh, the organic matter that's still in the process of decaying. Whereas, you know, this soil is that uh, there's not nearly as much organic matter. Um, it's, it, it feels a lot, um, you know, silty, siltier and, and, and uh, more gooey versus, you know, this stuff here just has a completely different you know, feel in the, the hand. It feels like at like chocolate cake um, versus this stuff, you know, feels like you're holding mud. <clears throat> and so uh, now when we look at the, the difference in, you know, the, the, the speciation and, and the, the different kinds of plants that are growing on the soil surface, 
and we're into a lot more, you know, dry land species. We've got things like, you know, sages and, you know, the, the, the fescues. Um, uh, and that's just where there actually is plant growth. There's, there's a huge amount of, of unprotected ground out here that uh, uh, is going to be prone to, you know, a lot more, uh, uh, you know, the, the detrimental effects of the sun. Uh, you know, the, the UV radiation is going to sterilize the soil, uh, you know, kill any, any microorganisms that are on, on the, the soil surface or just below it. It's also going to, to dry out the soil and, and cause the, any water, you know, we're getting a really nice, you know, rain right now. We've probably had about two inches in the last, uh, last you know, day and a half here. But as soon as we get another, you know, 25, 30 degrees Celsius day uh, with, with a strong wind, all of this moisture is going to evaporate out. And so it, it, it will be effectively that we did not get any rain versus over in the, the, the forest ecosystem where there's, there's more of a canopy that can buffer out the sun's radiation. There's, there's more ground cover. There's also more organic matter in the soil to actually absorb that water. <clears throat> uh, that ecosystem is going to be a lot more resilient to drought. It's going to be a lot more productive. And, uh, um, and the only the key difference here, you know, apart from a few meters apart, is is that someone had the the foresight to install a very small water harvesting feature in the landscape uh, a couple decades ago. Okay, great. So that was just a really small example of of what sort of patterns we'd look for over the next coming weeks. Uh, we're going to be working with Dave with our five step process. So clarify your values and vision diagnose your property for strengths, weaknesses, and threats. And so we've started that diagnosis process just to kind of give Dave a sense of what he's going to be looking for as he goes through um, the, the program with Dakota and myself. Um, and then once he's got a clear diagnosis of both his values and vision and the property itself, we're going to be uh, helping him through the design process so that he can create the design uh, or design the property of his dreams here. And then once uh, we get through the design process, we're going to help you with your implementation uh, through understanding how to make decisions and uh, ad addressing your weak links. So you're always doing the next most strategic thing. Um, and then uh, once implementation starts, then monitor and manage. And so this is a great example of some kind of like a post-mortem uh, monitoring um, thing that Dave can come back and kind of compare uh, as he creates uh, adjustments on the rest of his landscape, he can come and say, well, how does this compare to this little um, ecosystem right here that's kind of all formed on its own? It's a wonderful little analog that you can kind of compare to in the future. So as we go through this process, we'll be posting videos from time to time with Dave, and um, I'm sure you'll garner a whole bunch of, of information as, as we work through this project together. So keep an eye on the channel and leave any comments in the show notes below. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, Dave. No, thank you, sir. All right.